Does it feel like every single app that comes out these days is a subscription? Does it feel like these app developers just want to get as rich as possible and want to extract every penny out of their customers that they can? Now, I've read the comments on my video, so I know some people do feel this way. And do I feel like I've contributed to this feeling by covering a lot of apps that are subscriptions? Maybe. Um, I don't think that subscriptions are a bad thing fundamentally. I think they can make a lot of sense for developers and for customers. I've made a video about that. I've written an article about that. I'll put both those in the description. But today I wanted to focus on the other part of the there are so many subscription apps narrative that I think is really important. And that's that not only are there more subscription apps today than ever, there's also more free apps than ever. And there's more paid upfront apps than ever that make so many things more accessible to so many people. So Today, we're gonna, not gonna talk about a single app that I'm using that I pay a subscription for. I'm gonna go on my Mac, I'm gonna look at 15 to 20 apps that I think are awesome. We're gonna lightning round through them and hopefully you'll find something cool here that you didn't know about before. And if it does look cool, you don't have to pay a subscription for it. You can either download it for free, you can probably do a free trial. And at worst, you're gonna pay 10 to 40 bucks for it once and have it for as long as it works on Mac OS. So let's jump into it. Now let's start with Notion. Notion is a great app. You can pay a subscription for it, but I don't. Uh, so I use Notion to do all of the things that I need for this YouTube channel, right? I have uh, my video title, numbered them. I've got statuses. So I've got like a Kanban board here. My thumbnails go here so I can access them easier than just going to YouTube. I've got like my script here, outline, all the things I wanna talk about, notes. Uh, it's where I've got the outline for this video too. Um, and yeah, Notion is just awesome to use, completely free. There is a subscription. So this is like maybe one of the only on here that has a subscription that's optional but there's so much value in the free version. I think it's really, really great all on its own. But let's get away from Notion and talk about um, the app that I always talk about, and that's Arc. Arc is an amazing browser. I've made so many videos about it. Um, again, links in the description, but it's a really fantastic browser. And if you go to Arc browser, arc.net, um, you can check it out, try it out. But it's such a cool browser. I like their, their just energy of uh, the browser company who makes it. Um, really cool browser. I've talked about this for hours on the channel, so just check that out. Another app I didn't know I needed was AirBuddy. So if you have AirPods and you want to connect them to your computer, this is awesome. They did automatically connect to my Mac right now, and hopefully this didn't screw up the audio for this recording, but I can see the AirPods, I can see the case's battery life, and then I can clear this. And it works for other AirPods, so if they didn't automatically connect, I could have clicked that pop-up to have them connect manually, which is just harder than you would expect on a Mac to do. Um, it's harder on the Mac than it is on iOS. So AirBuddy is, again, it's like 12 bucks. Um, I'll put a link to everything again in the description, but really, really cool app uh, for just pairing your headphones. Next up is Alfred. Everyone needs an app launcher on their Mac. You can use Spotlight, but a third-party app launcher if you're a nerd like me and probably you watching this video. Um, Alfred, I think, is still the go-to for most people. I like Raycast because um, it does some cool stuff that I've, again, made videos about. But Alfred is completely free to use as an app launcher. And then they have this power pack that you can use to get some more functionality, uh, such as a workflow system. It does clipboard history. It does uh, text snippets. So you can like replace something like Text Expander or something that has a subscription. Um, really, really awesome stuff here. That's like 40 bucks. And they do have a lifetime option if you just want to buy it and just get every upgrade that they do in the future for free. That's actually what I bought years ago. And so I continue to get updates even though I am a Raycast user now. But anyway, Alfred is really rad. Next up is Bartender. And Bartender is a really simple app that basically cleans up your menu bar. If you have a ton of apps or icons living up here in the menu bar, this might be for you, especially if you, have an, if you have a MacBook with a notch on it and you don't have as much room as you used to, it's really, really nice to have this. Because basically, my menu bar looks pretty clean right now. It's just things I need to see. But if I hover over here, oh yeah, those are all the things that are also running that are, would also be taking up space and taking up my vision all the time. But they're not here uh, because Bartender hides them when I'm not looking at them. Um, if I go into the Bartender preferences, uh, there's actually a tons, tons and tons of ways to customize this. Uh, the menu bar layout is where you kind of choose, okay, this is what I want to show all the time. These are what I want hidden. New menu bar items will appear right here. And then always hide these couple things um, that I just never need. And then there's also some options for like showing updates so you can make it so that when one of these icons changes, it actually bumps it up to be visible temporarily while it's in this new state. So if you do like something with notifications, but anyway, um, really, really awesome. We don't have time to get into it. I should probably do a whole video on this one because Bartender is really cool. And again, it's a one-time purchase, four-week free trial, and then 16 bucks if you like it. 
Ferrite Recording Studio is an awesome app. It is the best audio editor for podcasters on the iPad and the iPhone. Um, I'm demoing on the Mac, so I can't show it here, but it is so, so good. I'll try to get a video of me doing some edits um, on screen now, but yeah, it's so, so good. It's like 20 bucks to buy a license to it, and then you get updates for a couple years usually, um, and then you have to pay to upgrade. It's like $10 upgrade um, to continue getting new features in updates, but Ferrite is fantastic, and again, pay for it once, and you can use that version of the app as long as you'd like. Okay, now Fission is a really cool app for a very specific group of people, and it's basically an audio editor um, to do basic edits to audio. Um, here's what I use it for. So let's open up Fission, and it's going to say, I'm, I'm on Sonoma, so it's complaining about that. But um, basically you can open an audio file or convert things. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in this video. So this is the video for the intro we just recorded, or I just recorded, and you just watched. Um, and I can basically go in and make edits here, but what I like to do is I have this whole thing and I wanna run it through uh, an audio enhancer that uh, only supports MP3s. It's an MP4 file, so I can export it as an MP3, whatever quality I want, save it there and it's going to export. Happens really quick. This is on an M1 Pro device, um, but there you go. And now I have an MP3 of that file, and I do this with uh, M4As, <laughs> MP4s, basically anything that has audio, you can use Fission to convert it to whatever you'd like. Next, let's talk about iStat menus, which lives up here and shows me my CPU usage. It also shows me my network usage, and it can do a whole lot more than that, right? So here's a chart showing the last hour of my network usage. If I go to CPU usage, uh, you can see kind of it's been steady over this time. And this isn't always useful, but it's sometimes interesting to see <laughs> anomalies in your system or whatever and be able to see what's going on. Um, and if I go into the app itself, you can see there's actually a ton other options uh, that we can do here. You can show the weather in your menu bar. You can show your RAM usage, your disk usage, uh, just how hot are different sensors on your device. Um, I actually use this. Uh, let's make sure it can access uh, Bluetooth. Um, I use this actually as my battery meter. So you can have different states for the battery. When my battery's charged, I don't want it to show in my menu bar at all. When it's charging, I want to see uh, the vertical battery and the percentage. When it's draining, I want to see the same thing. And when it's not charging, um, I guess I wanted to show that. But it lets me customize how things show up in my menu bar and what things show up in my menu bar. Really, really cool. Um, and again, not that expensive, like 12 bucks or something, and you can have it for life. For those of you who use Mastodon, I think Mona is a great app. I prefer Ivory myself. I think it's it's just a little nicer, but that is a subscription. And if you want a just paid up front, great Mastodon client for the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, Mona is fantastic and it's a free trial. And then you can just pay once and unlock the app on either one device. I think it's like 12 bucks for one device or 20 bucks to unlock it across every Apple platform that you can use it on. So iPhone, iPad, and Mac, really, really great app. Uh, made a video about this. Again, link in the description. And then there's Obsidian. How can we not talk about Obsidian? Obsidian is a completely free uh, notes taking text editor. I use it primarily to sync my highlights from Readwise over into these plain text files. So if I go ahead and reveal this in the finder, this, these are just markdown files. These are text files, so you can take them with you. You're not locked into Obsidian. Um, if Obsidian goes away, someone else can take up the mantle and they can read these files. It's totally great, totally awesome. I love Obsidian, made tons of videos, some more on the and that in the description, but it's completely free. There's a paid version if you want to uh, use some of their online services, but honestly, you don't need it and you can sync these over iCloud or whatever you use for cloud storage already, so there's no need to pay for them for syncing. Yeah, just use the app for free and it's awesome. Next up is Pixelmator Pro, which is my favorite Photoshop alternative. It's so fast, it's so powerful, it does some things better than Photoshop itself. Um, really, really awesome app. I love using this for editing, doing substantial edits to images. I use it to make a lot of the thumbnails for this channel. And yeah, it's just an awesome app and is a paid up front. You just buy it once and you can use it forever. Um, and it gets quite a few updates. I feel like I bought this a couple years ago and I've just gotten tons and tons of updates over the years. Um, yeah, just a super little app, little app. It's a huge app. It's just a super awesome app um, that will probably be a subscription in the future. But as of right now, you can buy it and use this version forever. So if it's interesting to you, this might be the time because Pixelmator, the company, is probably gonna migrate it to a subscription in the future, but yeah, who knows what'll happen then. But as of right now, totally paid up front. Then we have Reader. If you read RSS feeds, if you wanna just follow a bunch of sites and see every single thing they post in a really nice, clean interface that's reliable, that gets just enough updates to always work, but isn't constantly changing on you, 
Reader is a fantastic option. It's not very expensive. It is a separate purchase, I believe, on Mac and iPhone and iPad. So the iPhone and iPad is one purchase. The Mac is a separate purchase. But again, you pay for it once. It lasts for years. And yeah, it's just the best way to do RSS on Apple devices, in my opinion. Okay, now one of my favorite text input innovations in the past five to 10 years is the colon and then search for an emoji thing, right? Slack does it, Discord does it, basically everyone does it these days, but Mac OS doesn't. And Rocket is a really cool app that adds this to your Mac for free. So if I wanna add the joy emoji, there we go. I wanna do ta-da, there we go. I wanna do fire. All these are here. They're super easy to access. Rocket is an incredibly fast, easy to use app that again, just works everywhere. And you can make it uh, not work in specific apps. If we go here, uh, let's go to our preferences. You can set skin tone, the trigger key. Um, I have it not actually kicking in in these apps because I don't want it in those apps. Um, but yeah, it's really, really awesome. Um, and I just could not live with a Mac without this. Okay, now let's rapid fire through the last couple ones. Things is my task manager of choice. It's a one-time purchase on the iPhone, one-time purchase on the iPad and the Mac. I think it's 10 bucks for the iPhone one, 20 for the iPad and 50 for the Mac. So it's eight bucks total if to go all in. So it's not cheap, but I paid that like five years ago and I haven't paid a penny to them since. And I've used the app literally every single day since then. It's really awesome, really beautiful. Love it, made videos about it. Um, also, I'm recording this video in ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is a great app for editing screencasts, and I do that all the time for this channel. So really love having that. That's a one-time purchase. They do paid upgrades every like three to four years. Like it feels like I pay for it and then I get to use that forever. It's probably the most expensive app on this list. Um, I can't really show it to you now because I'm recording with it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty rad. Uh, Sketch. Sketch is a great app. It's an alternative to Figma, although uh, old school people would probably say Figma is an alternative to Sketch. Um, but I use it to do some design stuff, um, but I tend to prefer Figma. But I do the series of like my favorite albums on my blog, and I just have been making those in Sketch. And so I have all these documents uh, with effects. I can do custom text. I can... You can do all the design app things in here. Um, and so, yeah, it's a pretty rad app. Uh, basically, it's it's a weird one, I guess, on this list where you pay for it and then you get a year of updates. And if you don't pay again, if you like, it is technically a subscription, but if you don't pay again, you just stop getting updates, but you can keep using that version of the app forever. Um, if you do pay for another year of updates, you get another year of updates, um, but not a subscription. If you don't want it to be, you can just pay once, get a year of updates, and then whatever it is from that point on is what you get to use forever. So hopefully it works with macOS for the long run. And finally, finally, we have an FTP app, which is maybe the most old school app on this list. And this list had an RSS reader. Um, Transmit is the best uh, FTP app on the Mac, in my opinion. It's a great, great app. It's super reliable. It's fast. It just it just works wonderfully. And so this is me looking at uh, my quick reviews website on the server. Here's my local files, and I can easily just drag them over. Um, I'll just drag the Git folder over. There you go. It's there. It's on the server. Wonderful. Um, so really love Transmit. I can't really explain why, but if you need an FTP app for the Mac, this is by far the best one in my opinion. You should check it out. And with that, I've exhausted my list of apps. Uh, there's more, there's more. I didn't even look at my iPhone or my iPad, but there's more apps on there that are free or paid up front and are awesome. Hopefully this list gave you an idea for some things that are out there and maybe at least walked you off the ed off the ledge of thinking that every single thing is a subscription these days because it's not, it may seem like that at times, but there's definitely quite a few free and paid up front and pretty darn cheap apps that you can get that are just awesome. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you here next time.